Hi there, welcome to A Sound Guy, the podcast where I'll be peeking behind the curtains of the wonderful world of music. Each week I'll be speaking to sound engineers, music industry professionals and musicians and we'll have a little chat with them, share some fun stories from the road. And my next guest is the videographer and director of video at Ronnie Scott's Jazz Club. He started his career back in Paris doing videos, music videos and all sorts of things and he's progressed from being a, a runner and then a waiter at Ronnie Scott's to being where he is right now. Very interesting fellow. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my good friend, Christian Doho. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank um, you for uh, having me. Uh, it's, I'm aware it was quite a bit of a journey for you to get yeah, here today. Yeah, it's funny because I live, I live southwest and you live west and it still takes me that's, longer. That's the thing about public transport, right? It's, yeah, but it takes me longer to come here than to go to East London. Really? Yeah. It's, it's crazy. That's just, uh, it's just, just where we are, unfortunately. Is, We're not is. on a tube system, so you no. know, it's, uh, yeah. that, that makes a difference. Yeah, it is train and train buses. Yeah. You know? Oh, and well. But the buses was on for like forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buses, man, they're so unreliable as well. It's just, yeah, you were saying like three minutes and then it was like... Hang on, it was three minutes, seven minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was five minutes, ten minutes ago. Exactly, you know, exactly. So, uh, yeah. but, you know, there's nothing you can do. So that's it, it man. You're here now. You know, and that's yeah, the important nice thing. and warm and you yeah. know, nice equipment and stuff. So it's well, perfect. It's a, it's a work in progress. I'm still yeah. I'm still working it out. But, um, I mean, I've, I've upgraded the cameras. So they're all the same. Awesome. And as I said, it's just one remote and they all start. So the syncing problem that I had in the beginning... It's not a problem yeah, anymore. You don't, I didn't even need to clap or anything. You yeah. Just, so you're yeah. my first non-audio professional that I've got in. Yes, That's I'm glad cool. I made it. Fantastic. <laughs> right. Um, how I start is um, I normally ask if you could introduce yourself and how you got into the business that you're in currently. Yeah. What's, what, you know, just take us a little bit through the journey that got you here. Yeah, so my name is Christian uh, and I'm a videographer. Christian and, uh, Doho. Christian Doho, D-O-H-O. Uh, the Soho Doho. Yes, and it's a Doho, a Dozo. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've been working in the music industry. I mean, it's 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 a funny, funny journey actually because mm. I didn't aim to particularly be in the music industry. Yeah, but yeah. It, just, it just came in. Um, yeah, because I met you uh, working at Ronnie's. At Ronnie's. You, you were a waiter there. I was even not even a waiter. I was a runner. You started as a runner. I started I as a that. runner. That's what, eight years ago? That's eight years ago, right. yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, almost almost eight years, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, basically I came to London in 2008. And uh, I took a few courses here and uh, uh, bits and pieces. And then I started recording, filming some artists. Uh, some friends that you know were having a gig here and a gig there and can you record my gig and can you film my gig and I was like yeah cool I do it you know and obviously um, there's a lot of things that uh, you know with Akko and then you know oh can you work on this and can you do this and that and uh, eventually I started working uh, as on a documentary uh, which was about dogs in Swindon Okay. Um, and it was a dog dancing school. So it's like, you know, this... A dog dancing school. You know, this scruff yeah, well, right. thing is, you know, when you have like a a dog and its owner and they're performing like a dance together yeah, and yeah. this kind of okay. thing. So it was documentary on this. It's um, very interesting. Very interesting, actually, because it was... Uh, they were rescue dogs. Okay. And they would um, basically be a sort of like a, a health helper for their owners because also their owners had health issues right so i started working is on it, this is it in particular mental health um or was it also not you know, not, physical? Pa not particular but like mostly it's like different range of mental health okay okay, okay. um because yeah uh, it would be like a you know yeah because I, I know that the, they do have like dog treatment if you will for for people with depression uh, people with PTSD, these sorts of things, um, and also like I've seen on the on the physical side where they they bring dogs in to to see cancer patients and stuff like that mm. because you know it's it, they they're our best friend you know for a reason yeah exactly we've we've uh, we've tamed them yeah. from wolves yeah the 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 minute we you know even before we started domesticating plants yeah and other animals so yeah they've been with us for a while yeah and so it's, it was it was very similar to this you know the, the dog really helps them to 
feels better and because they're also those dogs are rescue dogs mm -hmm. so it would be um so i started working on this and it was uh i met the director on a course uh at rendance mm -hmm. uh, which is a film festival but okay. also they, they they do like filmmaking so it's like the winter classes. version of sundance Ah uh, yeah, the the, the um, Elliot Grove is uh, the um, the creator of the festival. is is Canadian. He's also okay. a screenwriter. Okay. Um, so I met her there, and then the documentary at the time was unpaid, uh, which was cool because I was after only after the experience That's and it, all these kind of things. That's and uh, but I needed an incoming, mm -hmm. so I applied in Ronnie Scott's whatever the job they had offered because my friend used to work there and said, oh, they might be looking for a bartender. So I went to apply there, and uh, they didn't have the space as a bartender, but they had space as a runner. So I was like, yeah, whatever. Let's do it. Yeah, Let's and then involved. basically, I think it's maybe two months after I started as a runner, hmm. uh, Simon Cook, the uh, manager director, came down at the briefing and said, you know, we just installed some cameras. If anybody has any experience, uh, come and see me. And that's basically how it started at Runnies. Amazing. You know? Two months in. Two months in, right. two months in. And uh, yeah, I started, you know, I went to see him. And then uh, I met uh, Jimmy Watt, yeah. uh, who was the director there at the, at the time, the video director. And then, uh, yeah, I started working with him bits mm -hmm. and bits. And uh, mm -hmm. then other jobs followed. And then, yeah. Fantastic, man. Yeah. That's great. It's, it's, it's funny how the, you know, the... Yeah, this, and yeah, especially because before I was more aiming to do more into like filmmaking and drama and mm -hmm, those kind of mm -hmm, things. But then, mm -hmm. you know, working in Ronnie's and then you meet so many different musicians and you do so many different kind of work with yeah, them. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it was, so yeah, the journey was, uh, but then I work with, you know, different companies outside of um, Ronnie's because yes. I wasn't full time at Ronnie's mm -hmm. at the time, and especially in camera. So I was in a lot of different freelance for different, uh, different mm -hmm. companies and, uh, yeah, and then eventually I got the job. Fantastic, man. Yeah, because you did a, uh, what was that, a video hosting uh, skirt, something, that you were working for, that you, well, not working for, but you did quite a bit of freelance work. Yeah, Boiler them. Room. Boiler Room, that's the one. That's the one, room, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah and they, because they, they put out the first sort of uh, live streams that we did at Ronnie's, right? Yes, yes. Um, so the first one was Winton Mars. The first one we did at Ronnie's was Winton Marsalis. Man, what a legend! Uh, and that was yeah, that was uh, that was quite heavy. And uh, the funny thing is, the funny story on this is, I was just coming back from a festival mm -hmm. two days before, mm -hmm. so I was not in the best best state. Um, but Sleep yeah, that, deprived. Yeah, you know, which was not uh, very wise of me, but. Um, actually, Winton saw me on the side of the stage and you know, he asked me, like, you all right, man? Like, wow. Well. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, uh, I'm cool. here. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, you know? <laughs> uh, so Winton Masters was the first, but then, yeah, eventually they came in because they we did a partnership with them for um, Shen Kuti. That's right. The son of Phila, mm -hmm. and uh, which was a... Mad, mad performance. That was insane. That was I insane. remember it was, was, it was absolutely uh, crazy. I don't think I'll never ever think something similar like this to <laughs> in Ronnie's. Um, I mean, in Ronnie's, you never know, to be honest. That's right, man. Uh, but that was, yeah, that was a hell of a performance. And then basically, yeah, I I got spotted there by one of the directors from Boiler Room who asked me, do you want to come and work with us? So mm. I was like, yeah. And I started doing some man. different jobs with them. And, uh, yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was great. That's was fantastic, man. I I mean, I I want to sort of focus a little bit on the you know on on your journey to get to to there uh, because it's it's so good. Um, I didn't know that you did the you know the documentary and all those things before because um, I mean obviously when I met you yeah it was when you started in Ronnie's as mm -hmm. a as a runner and yeah. then you know I I saw you progress yeah uh, you know you you did all the the housework you did uh, you you became a, a waiter and yeah. you did that for a while yeah and you started but did you ever work with Silas Armstrong or was did yeah, you kind actually, of get in there no no after no I've him? worked I watched a lot of many many times with with Silas uh, so Silas was doing media. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. mostly uh, and we went a few times on different so London Jazz, London Jazz Festival mm -hmm. uh, Love Supreme Festival mm -hmm. um, we went on on different shows together um, him and I but he was he was much more 
uh, radio and yeah, he did the, the Ronnie Scott's radio, was, yeah, radio and he did Scott all radio those things, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So he was more like the the talk the talk guy, mm, mm. the guy who take the mic and interview other people mm. and stuff. And I was more like the camera guy. Camera so yeah. we go alongside with him and then you know interview this kind of kind of artist. Or sometimes we actually produce even some live stream together, mm. some production together. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, I worked a little time with him, but I think it was like uh, he left. Uh, just a little while ago now. A little while ago, and About six I, years, I think. Yeah, maybe a bit more. Seven years. Five years. Five years. I think All that's right. five years. Okay. I All think right. that's he left a year before I took over. Okay. Jamie. So yeah, Jamie was there for a bit. Jamie was there for a bit. Um, well, Jamie. I met Jamie two months, three months after I arrived in Moniz. Okay. So. Yeah, he, he was Jamie was my mentor, really. Mm, actually, mm, you know, mm. more, more yeah, inside. wonderful it's, guy, man. Yeah, amazing, amazing. I've, I mean, even today, there's so many things that I do uh, on my day to day life. Uh, I mean, day to day work mostly, and then I got Jamie's voice being like, "Don't do this." <laughs> <laughs> well, you do I that, can't imagine yeah. him saying "Don't do this" to very many things, but uh. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or uh, more like avoid doing that. Uh, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, fair enough. No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. No, the reason that, the reason I want to focus on this, um, the journey and getting to where you are now, because obviously, you've you know you've gone through quite you know it it was quite a journey to get to where you are to be the official videographer at Ronnie Scott's yeah. Jazz Club, which yeah. is in itself, it's, you know, congratulations. Thank you. You know, I'm always, Thank you. I'm always very proud of you. Thank um, you. To have seen you grow up in the, in there. And it's, you know, it's, it's good to see it. It really is. Um, but the thing is you, you came here, you did a few things and you, did you always have your eye on, I mean, after you did the documentary and these sorts of things, did you have your eye on becoming a, a video editor and videographer? Yeah, I thought, yeah. So basically, before even before the documentary, I had done different other different jobs mm. Um, mm. in London and also in Paris. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the, the journey to to Ronnie's or being a photographer and Ronnie's is, is I don't I don't think it's 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 tricky to just go there and apply and you know. Say, yeah, oh, that is be. that is what I kind of want to hammer down on because. You know, they, people, I mean, everybody I've spoken to, yeah. you know, they, they have the dream yeah. and, and the passion that's yeah. burning. And, yeah. you know, the journey to get there goes through various stages of crawling through shit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and the, I mean, again, the reason why I want to focus on that is because you you took whatever you could get to get a foot in the door mm. to to survive obviously yeah, because yeah. london you can't you can't live here yeah, if you don't have a job yeah, of course. it's just forget it um but you you did what you had to do so you could do what you want to do mm. right and through that with your through your perseverance and your your drive that you obviously have you achieved that goal yeah it it took a little while um because a lot of the times i um you know i speak to 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 people um and they they kind of get discouraged and dissuaded because oh you know I want to be a musician but I haven't made it yet and I'm you know these bands are not that and these and those and these and uh, it's hard I you know I can't find a job and like take anything take yeah. whatever you can yeah. get yeah. and if that passion burns bright enough you're gonna you're gonna spend your spare time working towards that and eventually the ratio is gonna become so that you're busy enough doing what you want to do that you can then quit yeah. doing those things that yeah. you have to do yeah and you know you, you start building your your future yeah absolutely. in that sort of direction absolutely. so i think it um it's a it's a very important thing that i i did uh the the last episode that i released with um christy Korovsky. um she wrote a brilliant article about resilience right um it's and when when we spoke it's it's about she was talking about uh she worked with i don't want to get this wrong the she worked with um sort of like a she calls it happy hard house or no no is it happy hard 
something like that. Uh, uh, co- it's called Free Fall Collective, right? It's a DJ and she's singing. And I mean, they did big shows. They did Best of All. They did uh, Glastonbury in front of Whoa. like 10,000 people, Whoa. right? Performing. And then the highs of that, right? And I'm sure you've experienced those as well. When you've done a, a live stream and it's just, everything is just buzzing and it's yeah. just, everything was a yeah. success and you're like, fuck, this yeah, is yeah, amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, you're nearly to explode. Yeah. And then she said three months later, she got asked to do a gig in a Starbucks, right? right. And the only people that were there were her parents. Okay. Okay, so her and a guitarist <laughs> doing a gig in a Starbucks when people after are getting coffee done, uh, three after, months after, after having performed in front of 10,000 people. You understand? <laughs> the highs and the lows that come with that and the resilience to to push through to make sure that you know you get where you want to be uh and not get dissuaded and yeah. not get yeah. you know uh you know whatever you want to call it uh, get down and and get uh, discouraged yeah it's just stick it out just mm. go if yeah. you know if even i think if you say you start this journey when you're 20 years old let's just you know pick a number here and you're at 40 you're still going but the passion is still there yeah i don't think any of that time is ever wasted no you know, at all. because at people all. people are especially sort of the the younger sort of generation you know the where they they need things immediately and you yeah. know i think the internet yeah. is very much to blame for that even though the internet is a great thing it's fantastic it's it's, yeah. it's connected the world Absolutely. right and it yeah. and it gives us the opportunity to put ourselves out there i mean look at what i'm doing right and i'm yeah. doing it with the internet yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah yeah so but with that also comes the uh i wouldn't say inability but the um there's there's like a hindrance or a or a hesitation rather you know to to fully commit oh but i i want to do this thing and i'm i'm not getting there so maybe i go do something else yeah, yeah. you know just uh, just to kind of drive that yeah. home and like you know stick with it no, if for this sure. is what you want to do yeah yeah no no absolutely i mean and i think i think even when you're not when you're not there yet i mean i don't think either of us is, is there there but i think we're on the journey of you know doing what what we want to do and yeah. what we like to do and i think mm-hmm. we find it we find excitement and 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 you know creativity and 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 drive in doing what we do you know for the reason why we do it um but i think even before before you get a position like like mine or like yours is as in you know being a sound sound engineer at Ronnie Scott's uh, or being a video, video, videographer at Ronnie Scott's because i meet some people is like oh you work in Ronnie Scott's i was like yeah it's like oh i do sound do you th- do you think you can and i'm like you know all the guys that i know because you know my knowledge in sound well before i worked in runnies was you know next to rubbish you know press it was, play you know, yeah exactly <laughs> exactly it's like is that is that good sound it's tough you know and i i feel like not that like i've been in uh sound engineering school since i work in runnies but it's very close to that because my knowledge has gone from yeah from one to to six, I'd say, you mm-hmm. know, from mm-hmm. from my point of view, from my perspective, oh, as, a, as right? yeah, as a videographer, you know, <laughs> not as a sound engineer, as a videographer, you have to precise. Yeah, Our knowledge yeah, of sound yeah. is very not the same as yours, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, all all these little details. Uh, now, even you know, when I'm when I'm doing a a production, and you know, my ears, you know, I can hear something is wrong with the sound. You know, and I can turn around to either one of you guys who's doing this, mixing the broadcast, or if, if I'm not doing a production, which is not live, I can just go downstairs and be like, oh, I need more bass, or I need mm-hmm. more guitar. Mm-hmm. I don't think that would have ever happened six years ago. No. You know, I would have never noticed like, oh, I think I need more bass, or I think there's too much reverb here, mm-hmm. or I think I would have never noticed. Mm-hmm. I think it's by being next to you guys on a regular basis every time, and you guys coming in and installing new new desk and new pads and new stuff is like okay use this christian do this do that you can you hear this you know all the time even sometimes actually you guys are passing by in my office and some of you stop and say like hey, what's wrong with what's wrong with your thing and then you just change it all those little things is yeah. part of the journey of you becoming better because you didn't notice and then someone makes you someone makes you notice and you're like oh okay next time i know you know that that you know that you know bass guitar was too loud or mm. this was too too low 
So I think every every day in every whatever you do, it's you you, you get knowledge, you learn so much, mm. um, and even before you actually get there, you do get knowledge because it's actually where you learn the most mm. without the real, job. Yeah, without, yeah. Without, without without even before you actually on the job job because let's say you know before you get a full-time job or even if before you get freelance you, know, you do all those little music videos with your friends and yeah this but and that what, and this. what i meant with on the job is like doing it oh yeah yeah, yeah no, immersing absolutely. yourself yeah, yeah definitely in, in, no, in, in doing definitely yeah definitely thing. yeah so yeah exactly there's so many things that you're going to learn when i was in this documentary uh, I, i've learned so much um on on and the funny thing is you know i don't <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to do like a, a simple uh, comparison comparison but i work with jazz we work with jazz musicians i work with jazz musicians on a regular basis they're very tricky uh characters to deal with they're particular they're particular some of them and some of them some of them that's yeah. but that's yeah. that's that's the thing is like some you know you never know who you i mean 100% 100% until you walk up to them and you talk to them exactly, you don't know exactly they, you know there might be misinformation out there you, you don't know you know Absolutely. sometimes you hear things about people and you're like oh shit this yeah. is going to suck yeah. and you yeah. walk up and you talk to them and they're actually really nice people yeah exactly and then you realize that there's a lot of other factors around that managers and uh you know tour managers and agents and these and those and they could be involved they somewhere moves. along the line so yeah you it's know, no no absolutely so you you i mean there's there's so many things that you learn to deal with that you know no schools or university can teach you you know i mean you know it's uh i would i would try to name anybody but i, I wouldn't come it wouldn't come to my head straight away but i'd say some of the artists that you have to deal with um you learn it on yeah you learn it on the job mm. you know you learn it on the job and and it's even the way you're going to direct you know the production the way you're going to do it you won't know until maybe soundcheck has started mm. you know so mm. those those kind of things you know is sometimes some people say to me like oh wow like you know how did you get that job like da, 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 da. and i'm like i don't think that's the, the, the reason why you were asking like about the journey is like if i hadn't not been a runner or a waiter before i don't think it would have been a very similar situation for me having this job because mm. being a runner and being a waiter uh when you're a runner you look after the band mm -hmm. so you get to meet the band yeah. you may you get to talk to them you get to know understand sometimes their way of thinking mm -hmm. some of them are really chill some of them are very precise you know i want my coffee to be this hot yeah yeah, yeah, um, yeah. i don't want this in my bedroom i want this in my bedroom so you, you learn those kind of things first and then you you observe them you see you know some of them are already when as soon as they arrive they're about the music mm, they check yeah, their music yeah. already like you know who's going to play what and stuff mm. you know when some of those are you know they're still on their phone they're yeah, chilling yeah, they're doing yeah. different things so you you kind of see this kind of this kind of things first but also you make teaches you to read people a little bit it teaches you to read people you know so you kind of know and as i said they're jazz musicians so there's a lot of there's a lot going a lot on of in, stuff in, going on up there in yeah. their head you know so you kind of observe that and you're like okay cool um but also you you know you make a contact with them you establish a, a relationship with them some of them you know you meet them once and then you know some there's some artists that i've met when i was a runner so i used to bring them food and serve them drinks and all these kind of things and you know five years later I'm a videographer and I'm, yeah, you know, yeah. and I'm about to direct their show. Yeah. So, they, and they remember that and we, we remember that. So it's not like, you know, when I go up to them and talk to them about the filming, mm. they don't have this barrier of like, oh, who's this guy? Because mm -hmm. you've you know, already like, established. It's already established, you know, it's, they already know who I am. They know like, hey, mm. what's going on, kid? You know, they already know me as the kid that used to mm. serve them. Mm. And now that, you know. You so, become a man. Yeah, yeah, I grew up, you know. Uh, I mean, for who would have thought, for, right? For some of them, for some of them, I st I'm still a baby, you know. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm thinking of Didi Bridgewater, you know. She always, she's, she's so awesome. Oh, she's for me, she's the best. Mm. I mean, she's one of the best. Um, I think someone who who I'll always remember super fondly is Marlena Shaw. Yeah, my God, uh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I mean, to be to be fair, like most, I mean, you know, I'd I'd say all musicians, but you know, with the ladies, it's it's. It's different because you know they have this kind of um, 
mom yes i was just kind about of, to say kind of kind of behavior would you say like hey baby are you hungry and you <laughs> and you're like you i'm know, supposed to serve you food yeah exactly <laughs> you know uh, they're like sit down sit down you know so like, everything okay you know he's like yeah cool cool so you know you have all this relationship going on with them so when you when you film them and you know there's a problem on stage or there's a problem with the lights or you know with the sound or with the camera and stuff and you need to talk to them about about something you can go and speak to them straight away and you also you know who you you're talking to yeah you know you yeah. know who you're yeah. dealing with you know um so your your behavior and you know how you're dealing with the situation is different you knowing on different artists but you learn all of that when you were a waiter or a, a runner yes. because you've learned to deal with them <clears throat> you you a, laid the foundation before that you know mm. so but I think, also yeah. the what i you know what i think i you and another another sense of you laying that foundation is that you went and you like a common thread everybody i've spoken to uh everybody's had to work really hard to get where they are yeah. nobody just fell into it yeah absolutely i don't i didn't think i think maybe the person who's had it like the easiest if you will is miles because his dad started niger and he he got involved sort of it was a natural thing um not saying that that was easy or whatever but you know that was kind of it it seemed like that was the way that it was going to go anyway. yeah um but the rest of us we all had bar jobs and you know i mean i i've had a whole range of jobs you know um getting getting to where i am now um but always having that 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 passion and that drive uh mm. in the back of my mind yeah, yeah. pushing me forward and you know making sure oh this is only going to be temporary yeah yeah um, this is me building up towards something else yeah yeah but even i think i think even you know when i was a waiter or a runner i've i've learned a lot you know how to to deal with people in general you know so i think yeah, it's like a lot of people man a lot of things that you know are, are you know i tell the other guys you know at work the waiters and stuff and they you know some of them are still doing their studies and they they're not particularly in music or mm. into anything creative but they're going to do some other job i'm telling them like you know whatever you're learning now serving customers mm. it's going to you know this is this it's there's very similar skills that you're learning now that you're going to have to use on your regular job whatever you're going to do mm. Mm. whether you're going to be a lawyer 100% or a businessman or doing marketing or you know you're mm. going to use those skills and you're going to have to yeah. you know 100% i think um <clears throat> dealing with being in a, in a in a service role right i think is hugely beneficial to to anyone yeah right to i mean i would even urge people to go and do a bar yeah, 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 for absolutely. a year absolutely. doesn't matter what yeah, right yeah, yeah. because you deal with so many new people every day yeah. and you, you your ability to to read people and to understand uh you know uh, the, the you know the different kinds of people and and how you know their moods might be different yeah, from day to yeah, day yeah, you know yeah. you might get a regular customer that you know is always really nice and yeah. then one day he comes in so you your understanding and your your ability to um communicate with people successfully yeah um i think that is one of the one of the big things of being in a service position yeah, absolutely. because then if, even now yes we're still in a service position right yeah uh albeit uh, you know in a different uh sort of discipline but we're still there you know it's not Christian Doho show. It's yeah, not yeah. Tien's Van Dyke's no, show. No, 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 right? no, it's not. We're there to serve the artist. Yeah. We're there to serve the the audience. Yeah. I mean, you get a you get a wider audience than we do. Yeah. Uh, especially when you do a live stream, you mm -hmm. know, you you're serving people over the internet. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you know, we we all know how how ruthless people can be. Oh. But um you you've you've always made a success of it and you know congratulations to you thank you've you. uh, thank you you've really done a a, a good job and uh, i i see your um i love to see your passion and your drive and you're always learning something new and you're always going for it and there's never you never you've never arrived right yeah and no i, I think no, that's absolutely. the that's the only way to be yeah. is to to never arrive i think it's also the fact that you know I mean when you when you work at run is and but in general I think it's both where you work and your 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 personality or how good you want to be. Yeah. So yeah. you know yeah. in run is we 
we are we are top venue, so we have to produce top quality content. You know, yeah, or try no to be at the best as as possible. Mm -hmm. um, visually, you know, I think it's not you know it's not the whatever cameras you use or do you know what I mean. It's sometimes sometimes people tend to have like okay, we get this great cameras we're gonna yeah, do a yeah. great thing is you know you might not have the best cameras but the way you direct the show and the way you direct the people you're working with and you try to 100%. express the music through yeah. images i think that's that's the most important so you know you're gonna work with people you know also you know i mean how, how the people around me that i work with are amazing you know mm -hmm. it's, it's this 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 that you have to put in account it's just not only me saying like oh well, i wanted it's like I've got people around me, you, uh, Miles, mm. you know, Charlie, mm -hmm. like all the all the sound guys. For me, for me, all the sound guys in Rune is always amazing. But you know, you, you see how good they are and how good they they. For example, me when I when someone is mixing my broadcast, I can see how committed they are to the sound. You know, and I don't realize this because I'm focused well, on my you've images got your thing. and I got all the things to deal with. Um, but the fact that they, they, they working so hard on the sound is almost like, I'm like, they working so hard on the sound or my cameraman's downstairs, they're working their ass off on the thing. I can't let them down also on the other side. I have to... Everybody's pulling everybody else up. Exactly. You know, I have to put the whole thing together in a way that, you know, everybody's hard work gets put out there in a nice way that, you know, it's not diminished in any way because this went wrong and this went wrong. There's always going to be problems, you know, but hey, that's, the problem is actually, that's when you actually learn, you know, the most because you've, you've had this problem and you look, okay, you go, yeah. I had this problem, I'm, how I'm going to fix it? Mm -hmm. What went wrong? And then mm -hmm. when you see what went wrong and then you, you know, you, you see the problems and you try to put your head around it to fix it once it's fixed. You won't necessarily, you might do that mistake again, but basically if that mistake happens at a crucial moment, you will never do that mistake again. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Or, uh, but also, you, also you'll be able to fix it better. Uh, my friend Hugh Neal, whose podcast is coming out tomorrow, fantastic um, producer, mix engineer, incredible multi-instrumentalist. Um, I, I've known him quite a long time. We toured together. He played with James McCartney, okay. BVs, keys, nice. uh, guitar. Um, he plays drums. He plays bass. He's this one of those fucking ninjas with everything he does. Doing Mark Paul. Mast, <laughs> master level Krav Maga instructor as well. You know, it's just one of those guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he said this really um, interesting thing. And like the the level of professionalism is the speed of recovery, right? In anything you do, yeah. you can make mistakes because we're people. We make mistakes. Shit, man, these things happen. Yeah, yeah. But it uh, and I and I say this constantly over and over. We we're not there uh, for when things go right because when things go right, anybody can anybody, do it. Yeah, it. It's about when things go wrong, and they do go wrong. Yeah, it's how quickly you can recover from that. And working in a place like we do, that time needs to be. A second or two seconds, yeah, five absolutely. seconds maybe yeah. at the yeah. tops. Especially, yeah. I mean, I th I'm not sure how much leeway you have, but if you've got a couple of cameras and one goes down, you can quickly switch to the other one yeah. whilst you're. But for us, if you get feedback, five seconds is too long. Yeah, of course. One second course, is too long. Of course. Of you course. understand? And now, these sorts of things, we got to fix that like super, super yeah. quickly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and, and like you said, it's with the time you learn how to deal with these things. And it's, it is a time earned skill. Um, you can't expect anybody, you know, out the blocks to be able to deal with all these things. Doesn't matter if they have all the yeah. information. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just experience and experience and experience. It is, it is, it is. And you know, you, you try out new things, you, you know, and when you try something new, you have the stress of, is it going to work? And if it does work, am I going to have a problem at some point? Mm. What kind of problem could I possibly have? And then you might expect, you might think of every single scenario. Uh, and then on the day of the thing, the one problem that you didn't think of happens. Oh, always. You know, and you're like, right, okay, cool. You know, but then that, that problem, you're glad it actually happened because now you know, 
you know, now you know, happen. so you can you can move on forward and be like, okay, cool, that kind of thing can actually happen. Mm. So you move it for next time. So I think it's all those little things, um, whether it's, you know, being, being a runner and being a waiter or even, you know, once you start learning, you know, more in depth your job because, you know, you're more exposed to what kind of things could happen on, the, on a regular basis, which is, you know, having a musician that, you know, just changed the set, set list in the last minute. Mm. saying like oh we're going to play this we're going to play that this going to there's going to be a drum solo there there's going to be you know guitar solo there da, da, da. and actually five minutes before it says that actually we change everything so it's like your capacity of adapting yourself to any kind of issues that can happen and uh, yeah I think it's you know as I said you, you've you learn a lot of this even before you actually in the job mm. in the industry the, the okay you know it's it's the those pre-production kind of pre-production yeah it, it's not even pre-production no more, I, I mean no but even in your mind even in your uh, mind it's, it's, you know? it's good to to hear that you that you say that i mean i think we're maybe um maybe a bit more cowboys <laughs> when it yeah. because i think we're sort of like we have a sort of like a reactive thing you know we'll 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 get there, and then we we'll do the sound check, obviously, and we kind of yeah. know these sorts of things. Mm, 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 uh, but it's not necessary, or not, you know, not not strictly true that we know the music because we see hundreds of artists. Yeah, exactly. we, we can't be expected exactly. to know exactly. everybody's music, exactly. all the album, exactly. all the repertoire, yeah. everything. So you don't know when a solo is mm -hmm. going to be. But you know, you you've got about 0.5 of a second to to boost that guy when he, you know, just look at the stage. You can see somebody walk up to the microphone, and they're going to do that. So. Um, do you talk through with bands through their set list to kind of know when solos are going to be when you have to cut especially when you do how much delay is there is it like a one second delay or a two second delay in going out live um well it it, de it depends actually sometimes sometimes it's it's not even it's sometimes immediate. It's, yeah sometimes it's immediate okay. i mean most of the time it's immediate you know so do you talk to the bands beforehand do you talk through the set list it's kind of like drum solo in this not obviously you're not going to go through it note by note that yeah. would just be silly yeah but uh you do you get like breakdowns do do you talk to them so, and say okay well this guy's gonna do a guitar solo on this song yeah i mean it, it really depends who's playing and that's course, that's the thing okay. about ronnie's and, and you know jazz music in general mm. you know um i work with like you know some rock artists or hip-hop artist and it's more like you kind of you kind of know what they're going to do. You know, there's mm. going to be this part here, this bit here, and then, you know, mm. maybe he's going to think here and then do this bit. But like with jazz, it's like, you know... Anything can anything happen Anything can happen, anytime. anything, you know, they can decide to go on a, you know, on a solo and be like, you know what, actually I'm playing. It's like, no, you have a solo, you know, so it's, mm. he's going to be playing and he's going to he's gonna tell everybody to stop and he's going to point at the drummer and be like, you know, yeah. you and the drummer's yeah. going to start, you know. Yeah. So you... you, 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 you it's difficult. Sometimes I do. Sometimes you know some artists themselves they really like. Yeah, they're like this is the way I want to like be. This, yeah. this, okay. this, that, this, okay. and this. So okay. most of the time when it happens, and it's funny as I said because you know already sometimes as soon as they arrive to the room or arrive to the club and then start to get it ready for soundtrack, you kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get to read know, them already. Yeah, you read them already because you're like, yeah, okay. It's kind of like when they walk in wearing sunglasses. You're and, like, yeah. right, you're going to be like that. Today, okay, right? you know, exactly. <laughs> one you know, of those. So, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, it's just like, okay, cool. Okay, well, you know, what kind of character are we, yeah. are we you facing You know, the today? only two kinds of people wear sunglasses indoors, right? Is it? Blind people and assholes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember that. Yeah. Um, uh, well, it's I'm not like, strictly true, but it it serves me right about ninety percent of the time. Okay, cool. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> you have your free. Yeah, you just and, got you the know. free sp spirit. Yeah. yeah. So yes, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, we don't we don't talk actually through. I don't talk through. Sometimes I ask. I most of the time I ask for set lists. Um, and if I know, so you them, can sell the money back afterwards. Yeah, exactly. You know, I keep them on the side and mm -hmm. be like, you know, in fifty years, like that was a set list of mm -hmm. you know, um, I have but, a scrapbook. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or just yeah, actually a book of set list. Mm. Why not? You yeah. Know? Um, and uh, yeah, sometimes it depends. It depends uh, who who's playing and you know what they're gonna do. And 
how tricky the music is right for us to understand mm. because sometimes when they're playing music like they're playing the underground just, or something who's just like way out there yeah is, is it a bit harder to to direct those ones i think pb underground is so, so because of who it depends who play who's playing sometimes you have to know who who's the who's the leader of the band yeah so if it's a sax player or if he's a piano player mm. or he's if he's a drummer main focus exactly you have to know who so when you know who's the main guy then you kind of well that's easy you just read the name on the door right yeah well, <laughs> well you know but the, thing is, the thing is like man. when his brothers how do you do yeah or yeah, when he's you yeah. know he has the same name of another uh, artist no i'm only kidding man. you know no no no, no. <laughs> because you know you're the avashai cohen for example you know that was um that's kind of tricky because they both have the same name and they're both israeli uh, but they don't play him and who uh so uh, both avashai cohen's there's, there's, there's two there's Avashai two Avashai coins. Right, the bass player. There's and the bass player yeah. and there's a sax player. Oh, right. And they have this... See, so, now I didn't know that. And they're both I know f- the bass player well. So, yeah, I know the, everybody knows the bass player until the sax player mm. came and the first time I saw the sax player. Oh, wait, and he's on. amazing. He, Yeah, he's great, but he's he's very political as well, isn't he? He's a bit more yeah. political than you. Yeah, yeah, right. No, I know yeah. him. I I, th- I think I know him better than I know the bass player. Yeah. He's a lovely guy. He's amazing. Super, he's super he's cool a very guy. nice guy. He's, he's a... He's a, he's a, he's a amazing player mm, mm. amazing player i really like his, his his playing but um you know so sometimes you added you know right you yeah. name and you yeah know. you don't want to have the wrong average icon. exactly you know i mean <laughs> you don't want to and they don't none of them wants to change name they want the boss they, they're having an argument right so it's not like as the, in uh, change your name no you change your name um, you change your name was it uh david bowie who his real name i'm gonna fuck this up i know it's Oh, shit, is it David Jones? I think, or it's something like, and then he, it, it was at the same time as Tom Jones, and he, I think he was going to be Tom Jones, right. and then okay. Tom Jones was first, and then there was another guy who had the same name, and he was like, fuck it, I'm going to just make up a name. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, you know. It's... But yeah, or like in uh, Office Space. You know, you could just call me Mike. Yeah, <laughs> Michael <laughs> Bolton. <laughs> yeah, you know, you can, you can, you know, you can create this kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it depends. So when it's a drummer, it's if you're going to direct uh, a, a production with a drummer, it's kind of, I wouldn't say easier, but it's 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 nicer because you can rely on the on the on the beats, mm. you know, mm. so you can count. So the way they're playing, you're like, okay. This is gonna happen, and you can know when the track is finished because the way he's gonna play. Mm-hmm. So you, that's it's it's nice to basically sometimes when it's a drummer, mm-hmm. it's like okay, cool. The drummer is a bit. I, don't, I wouldn't say easier, but you get you get more clue. Okay. On what's happening. All right. Because of what they play. Okay, that's um, interesting. When it's uh, when it's a bass player or a piano player, it gets a bit more complicated mm. because they can they go into some. Parts, yeah, and, and all the fal- false stops and all the this and exactly, all of that. Exactly, you know. And then, you know, they go into some notes and actually you think it's like, oh, they're going there, then they're going somewhere else. So you're like, okay, cool. So you have to pay. V- and actually, that's this is when, again, the drummer is your best friend because of the rhythm he's playing. Mm-hmm. Even if musically they kind of lost you because of what they're playing and right. it gets really tricky, mm-hmm. you still have the drummer... And yeah, helper, giving you guidance. Giving you guidance on, okay, this is where we are. Oh, okay, we we ended up and, you know. Okay. So you kind of know the drummer is, the drummer is your, one of your best friends. All right. When you're directing Well, that's, that's very jazz. interesting to hear, you know. Yeah. I mean, they they are considered as the, um, you know, the engine of the band. Absolutely. In in any kind Absolutely. of band. You know, they're the timekeepers. Yeah. They're, the, they're the driving force. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Regardless of who the main instrument is or what it is. Yeah. But... They are the ones that are there, keeping everything together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they, they, I suppose it's easier to <clears throat> to hear a signal from a drummer. You know, it could be like a quick paradiddle, and yeah. you're like, right, we're going yeah. into the chorus. Yes, uh, rather than a guitarist who's just whittling away, and absolutely. he can go from verse to to pre-chorus to chorus to middle eight, and he yeah. just keeps going. Yeah. You know, so yeah, well, that makes a lot of sense. It's very so, interesting you know, that you see it like that. So yeah, so you have you have this, with, you know, drummers. Drummers are cool, but then yeah, sometimes as I said, sometimes you're gonna have um, some artists where everybody's everyone's the leader. You know, yeah, everyone's the leader. I mean, uh, who can I? Oh, we get super groups in there, man. Sun Ra Orchestra. They're right, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, now yeah, that yeah. this is this is one where you like, 
You, it's 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 extremely interesting. You know, the first time I heard them, I was like, "What the heck is this?" Mm. You know, I was like really confused mm. with what they were doing and how they were playing. Mm. And I don't think it's I don't think it's music that everybody can listen to. It's it's difficult to digest. It's difficult to digest. It's difficult to listen to. Mm. Um, mm. You know, it's super out there. It's out there. <laughs> it's out there. Yeah. And I, you know, sometimes I'm th I, last time they came into the club, I was thinking. If I if I didn't if all so many of my friends because obviously when you walk in Ronnie's you you make so many friends yeah. at the end you know if so many of my friends wouldn't be weirdos mm. you know because I mean for me just mentioned are weirdos in in a nice way in a nice 100%. way don't get me don't get me but wrong they're all, I, because I they're so dedicated to the cause to the to the to the thing yeah. you know if they were not like this and they would not make me discover so many different kind of music which is mm. also out there i don't think i would have been able to appreciate san ra mm. because i would have been like oh, no no man this, this is a mess but because you know i've that is also a time learned skill listening to contemporary it, it jazz. is it is it is it i is. mean for me uh i was always i suppose i was ignorant you know, but I was always like, uh, that's what I thought of as jazz. Yeah. I was like, man, this doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it just, yeah. I, I can't get with it. I'm just, I gave it a little try and I'm just going to steer clear. I'll stick with the blues yeah. and the rock and roll yeah. and all these sorts of things. Yeah. And then I just fell into it. And now I love it. Yeah. I really do. You know, yeah. um, I I think maybe I understand it a lot more as well. Mm, yeah, yeah. Which is a which is a big thing with jazz. It's not it easy listening. Well, you it's get not. easy listening jazz, but it's not the majority of it is you you got to kind of pay attention. Yeah, because you know, no, they're, they're telling they're telling you something. Absolutely. Um, and so it's many not different just references. pop music yeah. that you Yeah, I love when they do that when they make these little musical jokes yeah, yeah, in yeah, their yeah, solos yeah, and stuff. Yeah, it's exactly. You know, and that's and that's the thing I think there's so many for this is you know there's so many references that they that they do and uh basically it's, it's a funny journey because i used to have a jazz band jazz band uh when i was like uh, 13 or 14 so basically in france uh on the 21st of june there's uh there's an event to celebrate the summer solstice which is called uh, fête de la musique okay. so it's basically uh a celebration of music day sort of thing so everybody's welcome to perform music wherever they like all right in big is this in paris or in, in all over france all over france, okay, cool. france. It's, it's very traditional fantastic um the kids at school when you in your music class you learn some music because that's part of your curriculum mm. but you also learn some music because that's what you're going to perform mm. on the 21st of june okay at the end of the year in front of your parents right. in the school that's not compulsory that's uh, or is it well at school it's cool it sort of is okay it sort of is because it's like it's almost like this big musical event you, you when kind you're of school, expect it to take part you kind of expect it to take part okay. you know okay. uh, you don't have to i mm. think you can escape but most of the time it's it's a whole thing with the class gotcha so you gotcha. kind of have to be right. in it i'm right. talking about primary school mostly gotcha. right, right, after right. that right. it doesn't become compulsory from the school but you, you still have expected. some events and yeah. you know you still, there's still something going on so okay. if you want to be taken part of you can uh, if you don't want to i'm sure you can you know find get a uh, sick note yeah exactly <laughs> i'm not yeah, exactly. feeling so good today. yeah yeah, yeah exactly oh, my exactly. stomach oh yeah 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 no, but I mean, I never had sick notes, especially <laughs> for music, because my parents were like, you have to play an instrument, you have to play music. Do you, do you play an instrument? I played uh, I played guitar so when I had a, my jazz band. Okay. Um, and later, I've been offered uh, an harmonica, actually, when I arrived in London mm. uh, after a year, because I became a big fan of, uh, of Bob Dylan. Mm. And uh, because I think when you're in France, uh, and I think a lot of people are, were like me or are like me, at the time, it's like you you love Bob Dylan for what he represents, you know, like the rock from the 60s, 70s, mm. you know, this he's guy. He's a rebel, man. He's a rebel, mm. you know, he had all this thing going on and um, and his story was amazing. So, you know, you, you like more like the, the melody mm. and the story more than actually mm. what he's talking about. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know. Don't always understand it. You don't understand it, you know. Mm -hmm. and, especially uh, yeah, if you're from a especially if you know you know non English people. Yeah, non English non English speaker. speaking country, yeah. And uh but then once I understood his lyrics when I came to the UK and I understood it, I was like, Wow. It's deep. Well, yeah. 
I was like, what an artist, you know, it's really that like some of the lyrics really touch you and you're like, wow. So, um, so yeah, I played guitar and then later harmonica. Uh, but yeah, when I had a jazz band, we, uh, I mean, when I had the band, my friend basically played saxophone. My best friend had a play saxophone and uh, his dad is a massive jazz fan. So he had this big collection of all this jazz for us. And I was like, oh man, it's too boring. Mm. But my mate, uh, sax tutor was saying, you know, you know listen, you, his twin brother plays guitar, you play guitar, he plays saxophone. Why don't you guys do a band? Mm. But we didn't know what to play. You know, so we're just like, what are we gonna play? And then we, so we picking up some CDs from their dad's collection, right? And then started to to play that, to play that. Um, and the funny thing is, many times it happened. Many times I was directing a production at Ronnie's, and it was kind of difficult to direct the way the music was performed. It was really tricky. You know, they were breaking breaking rhythm and you know going in one direction and then coming back to the other. Okay. So I was like, you know, I was like, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? And many times the the way I got it to connect, it was because during certain solos or during certain part of the track, they would bring back, they would playing a part of, you know, Watermelon Man mm. or, you know, some Air Beyond Cock bits. And I was like, oh, I used to play. And because I used to play that mm -hmm. when I was younger, mm -hmm. I knew the part. So I was like, okay, I know where I am now. Fantastic. In man. the track, you know, That's so the really track good. Can, yeah, the track can be 25 minutes long mm. and you lost for like 16 minutes. So, you, mm. you know, as I said, you, you kind of look at the drama and look what he does to be able to direct in a, in a, in a decent way. But if you really lost, lost, if you have those little bits coming back to you, yeah. that's, like, that's <clears throat> like, okay, cool. That's great. I'm man. back now, <laughs> you know, so that's yeah, it's, you know. So how do you, um, when you, when you direct, uh, whether it be a live, obviously live stream is more on point. So let's let's stay with the live thing because editing is editing. You've yeah. got your time. You can do whatever yeah, you want, yeah, right? Yeah. You've got the feeds. You've got the you yeah, know, whatever. So <clears throat> when you do the the live directing, do you do you take your cue from the music? Uh, do you like do you do your switches on a beat? You know, switching cameras on a beat and these sorts of things. Is it? Is that a is that a big thing? Yeah. So you, you forgive you, my ignorance. No, but, no, no, you know. no. Absolutely. I mean, this is it's a great question because this is actually this is this is what the trick is. Um, you have moments where you have you, you change on the beat, mm. um, and then you, there's moment that you where you don't, mm. and it's mm. it's the, the matter depending of, on the music, I suppose. Uh, exactly, and right, it's also right. the matter of knowing when you do and when you don't, mm. and it's really tricky because sometimes you feel like. You don't want it to be too rigid. Too rigid, because you also visually you're telling you're telling a story. You you're telling the story that you're trying to help the musician tell the story through the screens. Mm -hmm. So you have what you have to know is like when you're in Ronnie's, for example, you know, even in other venues. Yeah. But when you're in, when you're in Ronnie's, for example, the whole environment. Mm has a story already yeah 100%. when you walk into whether Ronnie's, it's a standing event or whether it's just a sit exactly down trio exactly you know you already, you'll take your cue from that absolutely you, you already okay. have the thing so you know the musician themselves on stage they're telling the story to their audience yeah. and they're telling to a way that you know it's it's difficult when you're not in a room it's difficult to feel that audience you know yeah. because you know yeah you're separated you're separated you know yeah. if you're at home watching the live stream on your on your screen or whatever, you don't have all those people being quiet. Mm -hmm. You know, you might you make you can make as much noise you can as do you whatever want you want. And stuff. Yeah. So this whole thing is 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 different. So you have to um, you have to try to help bring the audience bring in. the audience in mm -hmm. and try to make okay. them feel the same as if they were in the room, which is the most tricky. Right. So basically, when you when you live edit and when you direct, mm -hmm. if you're too rigid you're going to really have this robotic kind of feeling mm. and it's going to be like, uh, 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 right, uh, right, uh, you right, know, it's right. not going to be it's smooth like and, you know, telling, you know, if, if it's, you know, a violin or whatever it can be, you know, you, you have to make it as smooth as, as possible. So depending on the, depending on the rhythm and, and, and the melodies you have, yeah, you have to, attention to the rhythm the melody would you would you tailor your uh your crossfade speed as well depending on the music yes absolutely yeah absolutely you you know you, uh, the guys downstairs you know especially uh, mike uh who's one of my main guy but the guys downstairs yeah. sometimes i try to just, tell what's them, his just give us his full name mike ozer 
yeah. Michael Oza. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a good cameraman. He's amazing. Mm. He's amazing. Mm. He's, um, I think he's. And then you've got Olivia. And I got Olivia Lightfoot. Lightfoot, uh, that's right. Yeah, who's yeah. Uh, my assistant director. And also, she's also a visual mixer and editor. Mm. Uh, and, and she does also graphics. Great. She does, she does everything. Fantastic. Uh, she's amazing. And uh, yeah, so uh, you know, I got people who are like you know, also different, different, different backgrounds. Mm. You know, it's like mm. Olivia is more uh, graphic design and these kind of yeah. things, where Mike is like proper, like DOP and this kind of thing, like lights. Um, so you know, these these guys, for example, they they the way they're gonna film. I also have to adapt myself how they are downstairs, right? Because you know, physically it might be hard. <coughs> They might be doing some stuff where you know they're zooming in or zooming out mm. into a way that you know i was like okay i don't know they were going to do this so right, i need to take this in to. account mm. and then try to resubscribe it to uh, to the screen so um yeah it, it's it's you have to try to feel the music you have to try to put your, yourself under the skin of the viewer mm. who's watching the stream mm. um you have to put yourself under the skin of the musician who's mm telling his stories through yep. his music. Yep. Um, and then I have to be also a director because I have to do a job where I have to direct the lights, I have to direct the sound, mm-hmm. I have to direct um, the, the videos. So I have to put the whole thing together. So I have to find the perfect match for all those little details mm-hmm. in order to have and a every show podcast. would be different every every show, would, show. every show are different well that uh well, in terms of the lights <clears throat> another thing i'd like to you know congratulate you on you do a really good job setting the lights setting the mood for each band Thank i you. mean personally sometimes i think fuck it's a bit dark yeah but, you know when you see it on screen it, it looks def- definitely better and i mean once you're in the club after a little bit your eyes adjust to the dark yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 um but yeah no you you do really well and you you move things around you select the colors and it's it's really mm. good so yeah you have to well also same that. you have to it's difficult because sometimes the band you've never heard of them i mean when i say never heard of them you heard of them into the music scene or the jazz scene but you've never seen them mm-hmm. and there's very very little of them online um because also you know the, the thing is like jazz jazz can be very niche mm. you know so sometimes yep, some, yep. some artists they're very well known uh, in I'm, the jazz in the world. jazz world but in a normal world you are like okay wow you know man i get that or oh, i'm not you know yes i like jazz but i'm a I'm a heavy metal guy. Yeah, I'm a rock yeah, and roller. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't know these. People. Yeah, but I, I think the fact that I, the fact that you go through you, you, you know, for example, that you're a rock and roll guy, I've I've been through different genres through through my life. You know, I've mm. been through hip hop, mm, uh, mm, electronic mm, music, mm. as you know, drum and bass, mm. um, classic music, mm. and obviously jazz. I think all these kind of music, um, if you work in the music industry, I think regardless of what kind of music you work in it's important to have knowledge of others other kinds um yeah even pop you know mm-hmm. i say even pop because you know in pop you know there's <coughs> well pop is such a broad spectrum it is it's, a broad spectrum I mean, you know so you can have like back in all the beatles original were considered pop music yeah you know? yeah they were, you know? they were the first kind of rock yeah. and rollers but they're yeah. also a pop band and they were the first Absolutely. boy band yeah you know so it, pop is just a, an abbreviation of popular. Yeah, so yeah no, no. It's, uh, yeah. But yeah, one hundred percent. I think if you kind of something that I that I keep mentioning over and over is if you have other interests, and we can translate that to music, to 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 video, to whatever. Right. If you have other interests in your life that can kind of translate, but you know, it just helps to to make your main craft more full and more um yeah it's just it's a a richer experience yeah Yeah. um you know like the where i got this is there was a samurai it was like a fucking he was a blade he was the man yeah yeah, yeah. he wrote a book it's like if you incorporate he did art and poetry yeah. And he mastered, you know, because for the Japanese, the 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 tea pouring ceremony in itself is like a is a big thing. Mm-hmm. You got to pour it perfectly. Up, yeah, get the, the perfect posture. Yeah. I read a book called um, <clears throat> Shogun. Amazing book. Wow, really good. Um, and in there, the the whole thing about the you know the Japanese culture and the 
sort of at, even with China and these sorts of things. Yeah. I'm not saying it's only them, but no, you know, no, no. in in this story, yeah. right? Everything you do, you have to do it is where the the whole story of integrity comes in, which for me is like one of the most important things. Like, yes, I do this for money, but I do this primarily for me. Yeah. Right. Whether I get 60 quid for a gig or whether I get 300 quid for a gig, I'm going to do the same work. Yeah, absolutely. And everything you do, you have to do that to the best of your ability. Mm. Have the right posture, have the right mindset, have, yeah. even when you're pouring tea. Yeah. Right. Then it's, it, it's kind of like people can feel the effort in your yeah, in when you make food. Definitely. When you just throw some things together and you're like, here you go, yeah, guys. People yeah. are going to be like, oh, this is fucking fast yeah, no, food. No, definitely. But if you make something and you, you know, especially if you, you go and you select those herbs and you go to that place and you get the tomatoes and you get to this, you know, that whole thing, it, it becomes... Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, you know, I was, in. I was, a, I was a barista and uh, in a previous life. And no, uh, I know, because you always give me shit about my coffee. Yeah, because <laughs> it's important, you know. It is important, one hundred percent. Especially when you work in a, in a hospitality. Um, but you know, I, th- and I, I have, think I have bettered myself. In you know, yeah, you have, you have. <laughs> um, no, but you know, if if you're gonna if you're gonna give, you know, like you said, you give a, you give a when you do something and you, you want to do it the best that you can yeah. you know if you're gonna serve food to someone or even drinks mm-hmm. to someone you know i mean i'm pretty sure any bartender likes making those cocktails yeah or you know there's a, there's a cocktail that they really appreciate doing in a certain ways like oh cool i'm gonna do it in a way you know uh, i mean i think a bartender that doesn't enjoy pouring making cocktails drinks. or pouring drinks i think it's in the wrong, it. wrong place yeah yeah, yeah. That's um, why I only did it for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I think it's, it's the same. You have to deal with the customers also, how yeah. they are and stuff, you mm. know. But sometimes, you know, you're at the bar, there's going to have someone, someone is coming at the bar and he's, he's asking you for old-fashioned and the way he's asking you for his old-fashioned stuff, you know this guy wants that old-fashioned. Mm. You know, this it's is like, okay, his thing. It's a thing. So right, I'm going to show him. And he's there and he's, he's, he's ready to wait because, you know, you have some people they are going to order a drink at the bar and expect it like that. Mm. So any kind of same with any kind of job, mm. you know, they might be, you know, you might be doing, you know, you might have your car is broken and you want to have to, you're going to have to get it fixed and you have, you expect it to be fixed on the same day. Mm. You know, the guy, first of all, he has all the cars to fix. Yeah. And maybe the problem you have might take a few days to, mm, to be fixed. Mm. You know, you can't expect it to be fixed in one day. Mm, mm. So it's the same with drinks. Mm. Or even and the same with food. Especially. With food. When I, when I wait for food at a restaurant, I'm like, sweet. At least, it, you know, if it's super, super busy, then yeah, you're going to wait. You're going to wait. But if I, I, I would rather wait 15 minutes longer for my food and know that it's freshly prepared. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that a, a chef isn't going to put his entire heart into every fucking burger he makes. Yeah. But about at it. least, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, at least you know it's freshly made. Yeah. I'd rather have that than food come to me at five minutes. Yeah. I'm like, this is still kind and of then, frozen. Yeah, exactly. And, and it takes uh, even yeah. longer to send it back and the whole yeah, thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think it is, it's the same, you know, so they're going to make drinks. So you same with, with, uh, with production and, you know, audiovisual and these kind of things. I'm sure. Doing the you, best with what when you, you do, have. Yeah, when you do a sound check. Mm. It's better to have like maybe an hour long, an hour and a half long sound check where the guy's gonna say, Yeah, can I have less of this? Can I have less of that? More of this? It might be a bit more of a pain, but at least it's clean. At least you know by the time and doors it, are, these guys are super happy. Exactly. Yeah, you know, yeah. whether the guy comes and it's five minutes sound check I, and it's, yeah. you know. Again, it depends on the band, you know. Yeah. But if, if somebody is particular um, and they do give you loads of direction, then at least you know by the time it comes, it's going to be good. Yeah. Uh, but it's unfortunately, it's happened a few times where people are super particular and they don't show up for sound check. Yeah. And then they start giving you shit when, yeah. during the gig and things like that. That's, you know, that's not cool. But the majority of the time, yes. Yeah. It's better to take your time and do these things right. Um, you know, and also, you know, I want to kind of, because you said before, um <clears throat> about this you know some people they have the best equipment but there's no there's no nothing in there there's no soul and, and it's not you know i think the the mark of um a true professional is to be able to go into any situation 
with any kind of equipment yeah. and making that work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. If I get into a venue and they've got a four channel mixer and I got a fucking four piece band on there, I got yeah. you know, I still have to make that work. Yeah. In this situation I'll probably take my own desk, but you know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. it's but <clears throat> you get you get people who are, I'll only work with this and I'll only work with that. No. Yeah. The, yeah for yeah. me that is a sign of insecurity of maybe somebody who's not quite um, able to do their job well yeah. uh, somebody who maybe has had everything that they wanted up until that point and they don't know how to deal with anything else but yeah it's definitely you know it to to, to take that time and to do it right uh, but also doing the best that you can yeah. with what you got yeah I think that's that's kind of the yeah no no absolutely I mean I was watching um, uh, I don't want to point out anybody but I was watching actually uh, a live stream yesterday um on facebook and it was jazz mm. and uh, i was like oh okay cool let's let's see let's, what it is let, yeah let's see what it, let's see what it looks like and um they, they look like they had decent decent uh decent equipment yeah you of know? course your your eyes are so trained you'll be no you know yeah right now, yeah, right? yeah no of course of course um and the, the sound was decent but the way it was the way it was directed mm. it was more the shots or the way it was being cut it, it just it was just cuts for the sake of cutting cutting mm. you know and it was being blurred out and in oh okay. just for the sake of oh, okay make it look it's like, like somebody read a textbook and they're trying all the new tricks exactly here. you know okay. it's like no change. It. exactly you know so i was like straight away it put me off mm. because i was i was actually ready to watch it and see like oh cool you know let's watch let's watch this it, it sounds it sounds nice because it sounded nice actually mm. to be honest the music was good and uh, the way the way it was directed put me off because I was like, oh, okay, you're just trying to make it look jazz. It's like a paint by numbers. Sort yeah, of thing. exactly. Somebody got a, a manual jazz, you do this. You blur. Blues, you, you do there. this. Exactly. Rock and roll, exactly. just switch every two exactly. seconds. And I was like, oh, you know, I was like, no, I was, it really put me off uh, watching it. And uh, compared to what you asked me earlier, it's like, yeah, do I direct? because of the music mm. hell yeah mm. you know it's, it's actually my main drive you know mm. I, I try to understand what's going on and try to understand who's having what solo when mm. and why mm. um, and uh, and what what kind of what kind of you know vibe they, they, they're trying to convey mm. uh, and I take all of this in account and <laughs> then I make my my you know mm. my shots I call yeah. my shots and yeah. I make my movement mm. depending on depending on that mm. I rarely just cut because I'm like it's, oh that looks nice I'm going to cut to this yeah exactly yeah. oh I'm going to cut to that it's, it's I think there's no point I might just stay two minutes on the drummer if the drummer is having a mad solo I'm mm. going to stay on him why not you know and then you just you just show the rest of the band for one sec if they all if the rest of the band is doing some other stuff to get along the the, the drum solo mm-hmm. but if they're not if they're just standing there watching him then I'm, I'm not going to cut leave you know drummer, I'm just going to leave it on the drummer yeah, let yeah, it do yeah. his thing and then once they go back all together you bring it all back together mm-hmm. so it's um it's a, yeah you have to you have, you have to, to feel it. It's almost like an in, in, intuition thing. Isn't that's it? I was going to say. I was going to say you. You almost you you almost yourself. You're almost like a a, a musician with the band mm. because you're also playing a part. Yeah, but you you what you do is your. It would be going into a band and not knowing the music, but you have to play along. Exactly, <laughs> and I think that's the biggest. That's the biggest trick is when, if you know the music. It's 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 always it's always it's always a plus because yeah. you can already anticipate anticipate or know the style and you're like okay cool I think I'm gonna do this even for the lights mm-hmm. you know you 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 put the mood because you know you kind of know already kind of yeah. what kind of mood it's yeah. gonna be but when you don't know the music uh, that much or one day playing unreleased mm. stuff, unreleased stuff yeah. then it's really intuition mm. like you really have to be patient even with yourself mm. because sometimes you can be impatient about you know oh you you know what's it going to be what's it going to drop or these kind of things and you just have to wait you just have to okay and when you do this you actually get even more into the music you you know so i take this example of uh yeah one of my favorite is uh, dr lonnie smith oh my god um, well, best show I've ever seen. yeah but for me uh, best, for me, best show yeah 12 years ronnie scott yeah lonnie, lonnie smith man best show um and the funny thing is like well the first time i saw him um i was a waiter Mm. First time I saw mm. him, and uh, 
for the real story, I, I was serving customers. Uh, I had a section of, you know, my section of all my customers. The first, the, the first weird things, and that's why I say sometimes it's good to be a waiter or runner to I, understand things. One hundred percent. Because you, 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 you already you see the crowd. Mm. What kind of crowd mm. is coming in the But club? But I think also <coughs> it's a an exercise in humility. Right, it humbles yeah. you a little yeah, bit. Yeah, 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 absolutely, uh, absolutely. And you, you, chat, you chat with them, you chat with them, and a lot of them, they have, they know, they have more experience. A lot of them actually, they, they, they do your job also, mm -hmm. but they've been doing it for 20 years, mm -hmm. and they come in here as punters and just, they just want to have a good time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you know, oh, I work for the BBC, mm -hmm. or I work for ITV, or I work for National Geographic. Mm -hmm. You know, this mm -hmm. kind of thing, and you're like, wow, okay, wow, mm -hmm. job, you know? And I see you, and they're like, you get a great job, mm -hmm. you know? And you're like, yeah, I'm just a waiter. You know, but um, but where are you, waiter? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So um, I was serving them, and the first thing that struck me was the fact that they were all ordering their drinks by two. You know, and that's the first, that's the, the sign of someone who doesn't want to be disturbed. Yeah, you know, it's like okay, I'm, once I'm, once Lonnie starts, exactly, don't they were even having ask me for and me. I didn't know who Lonnie was. You know, mm. I would, they were just saying, oh yeah, can we have. It was, and the most particular one, it was a, a dad and his son. And they were like, yeah, can we have uh, eight Pironis? And I was like, eight? They're like, yeah. I was like, do you want me to put them in the bucket for you? And they were like, yeah. Great amazing. idea. And I was like, right, okay, cool. So I brought them the, the beers, put them in the bucket and stuff. And then they wanted to order some food at some point, you know, obviously after mm. a few beers. Uh, and Looney was playing. And I was didn't really pay attention because I had the biggest section mm. in Ronnie's. Mm. When we were wait, I had the biggest mm. one. So when you have this section, you're almost like you can forget about the music yeah, because you're, you're going to be too busy. Yeah. You're going to be too busy um, serving people. Uh, but because my customers were doing that thing of ordering their drinks by two, I was already like thinking like, oh, cool, I'm going to have a bit more time. And then uh, yeah, so some customers were ordering some food. I was taking the order. And the music kicked off, and I could feel like my whole body, you know, having goosebumps, and I was like, "Whoa, what?" And I turned around, and I was like, I've "Got goosebumps right now." Just yeah, me too, it. me too. You know, and uh, he, the, the, it was just this unreal thing. The whole, and even the whole room mm, changes. Energy. The mood changes. You know, you're like, "Wow, where are we?" And uh, he played that solo, and after the solo finished, it was a solid three minute solo four minutes solo of me being like wow what's going on here? wow you know and i was looking at this and stuff and after it finished i turned around to my customers and i was like i'm so sorry uh, because you know obviously i just you know Stood and, and, they, and they looked at me like this and I was like no no man it's okay man we felt it too yeah, you know and that was my first experience wow. of of dr Looney, and i was like wow mm -hmm. this guy you know so uh he's the kind of for example he's the kind of musician You can you can have listened to his album a thousand times, It's to a thousand times. You will never be able mm, to, to actually prepare yourself properly for mm. what he's going to do. All you can do is be focused 100 when he's playing to focus 100 on the music and listen to what's going on, and basically you're going to know where you're going to direct next in the next. 20 seconds or so. Mm -hmm. You can't say to yourself, oh, this is going to drop, or this is going to drop, or this is going to drop. Mm -hmm. You know, you have, you have to just you go have with to, it. You just have to go with it. Yeah. And that's the, it's a tricky one, but it's a beautiful one because sometimes... Because, because it's you, so free, I suppose you have a bit more freedom. You have and more freedom and you have... And you're more forgiving. And it's, it's not permeated, so you yeah, actually yeah. really get along, you go along with. Mm -hmm. So You can do those nice slow fades, cross fades, and just, just go with it. And Whereas it, I, I would imagine probably with like a big band or something, it's a bit more rigid, so you're going to have quicker fades. Big um, bands big bands are tricky because big bands, you know... Anybody can stand up and do a solo. Exactly. <laughs> no, but I mean in terms of your sort of like the cross fade speed. And then yeah. these, you can you can quickly cut to somebody else if the music like... Pop, 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 Bah, bah, yeah, bah, bah. you know, you can you quickly cut to another thing, and it's fine. It's okay. The good thing but about when something is a bit more sort of like free and moving, you want to slow that. Cross yeah, fade, speed no, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, okay, right, yeah, right, yeah. Right. No, definitely. I mean, the good thing about big bands is like it's a big band, so whenever you're lost, you can just go back on the hole and some. Yeah, that's it. And uh, everybody's going to be doing something. And uh, most of the time, <laughs> everybody's doing something, unless it's Sun Ra. But even Sun Ra, most of the time, people are doing something. Yeah, all doing yeah, something. Yeah, yeah very different that's right you know but they're all doing something whereas yeah as you said you know when it's a smaller band you know 
can have more like smooth mm -hmm. kind of things and you know that's interesting i never i never really even considered i suppose that's just my ignorance again you know because we do what we do and you do what you do but i always i have i have thought about you know getting you on to have a chat with this and learn a little bit more because it's very yeah. interesting um even you know the the thinking about it and all these sorts of things it's, yeah this this um yeah this, this little trick and I, and I think that's what makes the the, the job a great job mm. uh, in my eyes because mm. you know i'm gonna walk in and even if it's an artist that i know i'm still gonna put myself into the music as much as possible yeah. so i can you know film it and in a way that you know it's almost like you you're, you're doing a painting you're not doing, you're not gonna do the same painting every day mm -hmm. are you mm -hmm. so you know one day you do this and then the other day you do that even if you have the same colors mm. uh, available. It's dependent on mood and everything. You know, and uh, who's playing what. So you have to, yeah, you, 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 yeah, you have to get along and uh, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say hope for the best, but you have to put everything in, on your side to be able to, to have something like good. So it's lots of different details, obviously, but um, yeah, it's, it's, I think the fact that it's jazz. It's, mm. it's, it's great and then you know when it gets a bit more pop uh or rock mm. it's always welcome but even with rock you know when you have someone like Wayne Krantz playing you know I love rock and I you know he, I love I love this guy but he's a difficult artist to film right because of what's going on stage. unpredictable he's unpredictable okay. he's unpredictable okay. uh he's, he's his music is very tricky mm. uh it's that fusion jazz uh, yeah fusion it's, jazz but rock. It's, yeah like mike stern as well yeah, you know they vibe, they yeah. go everywhere yeah, yeah, exactly, like, yeah exactly it's, it's exactly. happening and yeah it's, yeah it's yeah, a different yeah, energy, yeah, 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 yeah yeah no it's, absolutely and they're, they're amazing musicians yeah. you know they i mean they I think Wayne Krantz is... is uh, well, I mean, if we can compare it, right? It, you get somebody like Lee Rittenor, who's also a fusion guy, but yeah. it's a bit more sort of like, you've got more time. And yeah. it's, got, it's not that... Yeah, 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 you yeah, know, yeah. It's yeah. not like a machine gun. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. It, it's, I think, for it's example, like Lee, Lee, Rit Lee Rittenor is a bit more like, you know, let, let's let's play together. Let's have a, let's have a good time. Mm, mm. And uh, wherever the music takes us, mm. you know, we, we, we'll go alongside that. But it's I still want to go that way. Thing, yeah. But it's a he's bit more... Got you know, an idea of where he wants to go. Yeah, you know, I think it's, he, he's, you know... Uh, whereas Wayne Krantz, I've seen him doing sound check and stuff. He's very precise mm. with his mm. drummers mm -hmm. and, you oh, know... Oh, they'll give them nuts. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. you know. And, uh, but I, I love I love this guy. I think Wayne Krantz is the first artist since I, when, I was, when I started working with Ronnie's. He's the first artist that got me, wow. Mm. You know, I mean, I had few few artists before. I didn't pay attention that much at the time. I was like, oh, this is cool. This is a great place to work in, especially the people who work in. Mm in the stuff uh on the floor you know, it's great it's a little most family, of the, isn't most it? of the yeah it's a family most of them are into music you know well, especially when i started a know, lot of musicians everybody was mus a musician oh, yeah. i felt oh, even yeah. out of place with my oh, video yeah. thing because everybody was like but you're I'm a guitarist a you're right uh, yeah you know, no, i know but that's what that's what i'm saying i was a, mm. that that guy was like oh we need a video christian can you do it mm. because everybody was a musician everybody was a drummer a singer a guitar player a bass player you know which was a great thing so, uh, but yeah, I saw, I remember sitting with Gary uh, and we sat down there and then Wayne Kronz was doing the sound check and he was playing away and I was like, wow. You know, he did a cover of... Uh, Whoops, sorry, yeah. I just let it go. Yeah, cool. Um, he was doing a cover of uh, Tom York. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom York's solo album, Black Swan. And uh, in his all of his madness and tricky guitar playing and stuff he managed to drop as you said we said earlier he dropped tom york for maybe 10 seconds mm. and then went back and, and i was like wow how how yeah. how did you do that you know mm. and i was like okay wow you know this kind of that's a deep understanding of deep music. you know yeah this guy is uh this guy is special so uh it puts you in the mood so yeah when you when you work with artists like this it really gets you to understand what kind of spectrum you can face mm. because of the artist mm. how far they can go mm -hmm. um and then yeah it's you have to get on with it so yeah that's so. great man is that is that kind of um <clears throat> the reason why you wait till halfway or three quarters way through the soundtrack to do the lights so you know what the mood is and all yes that? yes so 
I have to know how they're going to behave on stage first. Yeah, with how much movement they're exactly. going to do. Exactly. Some of them don't move. Some of them go all over the place. Mm, yeah. So you have to understand that. Um, and also, yeah, the mood. You know, mm -hmm. so sometimes when they come late to soundcheck, it's difficult because, first of all, I won't have much time after they finish soundcheck yeah, because if they're yeah. going to go down the wire. Doors, and that's it. doors, then I can't, you know, I'm, I'm not screwed, but I'm, I'm in trouble. Um, and also, yeah, to get to get the mood, to get the feeling of uh, how they're gonna be, and how's you know, how is how much impact their presence on stage gonna have on the audience. Mm -hmm. So you know, I mean, we we at the moment we're having Judy Jackson is playing, and she's a she's a very soulful artist. Yeah. So you know, it's it's it would be better to create spots. Right. Where places where everybody's have their own little mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. but even though she moves, you you sort of like observe where she moves and then you create those spots where she moves. So right. when she's gonna go and do, right. you know, stand on the piano and sing with the mm -hmm. with the piano player and they're having this kind of like moment together, then the lights are made for her and for the whole situation right. to be made on purpose, so people know, oh, okay, there's there's, there's something happening there, mm. you know. Um, I suppose it would almost almost benefit you having an extension of the lighting desk upstairs next to you, right? Because um, that is possible. It is poss It is possible. It is possible. But I mean, when it when it comes to when it, when it becomes too tricky and it's a big show, mm -hmm. obviously we have a lighting designer. Yeah. Uh, so well, I mean, to have one in one place and one in the other, you could just. But then I suppose some yeah days yeah yeah there. I mean I think it's then a, we can then we can take over because we're idiots no. <laughs> you know we just push the fader up oh that that one yeah, number that three four and five right it's it's a semi it's a fader you know it's a fader it's uh, a fader uh, you guys have lots of faders too yeah, it's a, you we know? like to play with our faders um, but and yeah I think it's 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 uh, I mean the first time I saw a lighting designer actually operating a desk was in. I think it was 2011, something like this. And it was at a show uh, I was filming. And in the sound booth or whatever area, there was a lighting designer who actually became my friend later. And he was a DJ. He was a DJ and he was operating the lights. Like a DJ. Like a DJ. So he was really like on the beat. You know, and he was waiting, you know, and I remember the parties where we were going, I think it was like a lot of garage and a lot of uh, deep house. And I was next to him and the way he was operating, it was just, he was counting the beats mm. and it was like drop, drop, boom. And he was dropping and you could see the lights were just changing, Great, and, you know, and he was calculating, putting the colors and calculating and putting the amount of time. So, and even, he would even wait so he would he would count and he was like okay that's 24 that's 24 bits so he would put like, like a uh, a time scale of 24 seconds mm -hmm. on these lights so he doesn't have to look and so 24 later when the drop of the track comes that's just like goes just boom you in. know and he was just like that and it was like almost like he was having vinyls in, yeah, yeah, in yeah. his hands no yeah I've, i mean i've been but very fortunate to to be able to to witness that firsthand, I uh, did a lot of events uh, when I before I became a full time sound engineer. I worked in an events crew, um, and then I went and worked for an events company. And yeah, <clears throat> we had some top top class lighting designers, and I mean those guys are, you know, they yeah, they they're in even they've sometimes even got longer days than we do. As yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely, because they get in first, start rigging. Yeah rigging things yeah. up and then yeah. they start programming shows yeah. and just yeah. variability and different possibilities of yeah. what you can i mean yeah. they they put a lot out there yeah. and then it's you know they've got like books of notes and i was always like god damn yeah, these yeah, guys yeah. are busy they yeah like they're we amazing. think we're busy we've got fucking nothing to do yeah, compared yeah, to yeah. Them. Like the light designers are amazing mm, mm, yeah, they're, mm. they're very um i mean they 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 take everything in account don't they? Mm. you know they take the if so we, what the good ones do and then you get us, and we're just like, it's a fader. <laughs> Up to 80%. Christian said, no, bigger than 80%. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I trust you. No, but yeah. <laughs> I, I, but that's the thing. It's like, you know, in terms of lights, you have to please everybody. You mm. have to please the audience. It's a, yeah. You have to be nice for the, for them to watch, uh, you know, to look at. Uh, you have to please the, the video guys because, you know, oh, it's, 
you know, it's, it's overexposed, mm. you know, mm. I have to reduce this light, so you have to, you have to please them. Uh, yeah, you kind of have to please everybody. So it's, I think even for lighting designers, it's, it's, you know, it's tricky. Because I get, I get, sometimes people think I'm a sound guy because I, I, I hang around the stage. Mm. So I'm just waiting for the right opportunity to, to move my light mm -hmm. or to move this kind of lights. So people come and tell me, like, ask me some sound stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, you know, I, you know, can, can I have this? And I, sometimes I'm like, I don't even know mm. why you're asking me. I know more now because, you know, I hear You've it all the time. So and I, <laughs> I kind of know, I've seen it before and stuff, but sometimes you're going to ask me some stuff. I'm like, I, I, I'd like to help you, but I, I don't know what it is. You know, mm. I, you, you want to wait for the sound engineer because he's going to come and he's going to know. I don't want to give you anything stupid. Um, But yeah, I mean, you know, so I, I still wait for that right opportunity to, to move my life because I have to, I have to, you know. Um, but it's it's how, because also the artists on stage, mm. some artists are very picky and very tricky about, about the, the lights. lights. Yeah, can't be too bright, exactly. can't be these colors, can't exactly. be this, can't be that, yeah. And exactly. Have, uh, yeah. So he's going to be, you know, it's, it's, it's too bright for them, mm -hmm. but it's too dark for the, for the video. Mm. You know, and it might be too dark for the audience themselves. Mm. We, we can't see the artist. Mm. You know, and even the artist themselves. And like then, the, yeah, and then you have to really strike that balance, and you have to compromise, and you have to talk to them for everybody. It's, you know, and yeah, you have to yeah, come, yeah, and you know, yeah. you have to speak to. As I said earlier, you might have to speak to the manager, or mm, mm. you know, the or the the the, 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 the producer. Or, yeah. You know, how like this and that and this, and you know, sometimes to the other musicians, so they can convince them. Until I'm like, look, man, you know, we need, we need to take. This is what good, it is, you bro. Know, this kind of things. Just, you know, just put your sunglasses on. <laughs> yeah, you know, even <laughs> if you're not blind, uh, we won't uh, take the other kind into account. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so just like little different, little different uh, details that you know when when it comes to light, uh, because of the video, hmm. then you have to be, you know. But sometimes I don't always because sometimes I don't film. Yeah, you just, you just said you set a mood. I just set a mood yeah. for the you know because yeah, I want yeah, the stage yeah, to yeah, look yeah, nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and also the photographers they're gonna come in. That's right, yeah, and Carl Hyde, yeah, Carl Hyde and and Steve Copper they're gonna come yeah, and they're gonna it. they're gonna do their, their their photography. So it's also have to look nice for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so it's yeah, it's a whole it's a whole thing. I mean, I had an artist recently telling me, "Oh, um, can you not put this kind of colors?" Or this kind of colors, because mm. uh, the photographers are coming in during the show and they're going to take some pictures, mm. and I'm doing an interview later. Yeah. Yep, yep. And I don't want the the video from the interview to look too different to me from the from the pictures of the stage yes. of the performance. Mm. And I was trying to explain to her like, yeah, but you. You know, you're doing your interview. Yeah, interview in is in a room like in this a normal with a white room, light. You know, with yeah. normal, you know, yeah. normal salmon kind of light. You know, and when you're going to be on stage with Ronnie, it's, it's completely it's different. different. You know, thing, you're yeah. going to have yeah. some blue, you're going to have some yeah. purple, you're going to have some, yeah. you know, some maybe have some yellow. You know, you, yeah. you don't know uh, depending yeah. on the music you're playing. You know, mm. so I can't give you like a plain white light. She was like, oh, why? I was like, because v so it doesn't. If you just record what I'm saying now and play it back a few times, you'll be good. You know, <laughs> but they don't. They don't. They don't see it that way. You no. know, they. They sometimes it's really like you know. I mean, I had you know when you it depends on who you are, but like you know, if you're an artist, like I've, I had some artists. You know, they were being filmed, and they paid a four figure. Some makeup makeup artist mm -hmm. because yeah right you know. Uh, okay. Because because he was getting filmed. All right. And I, to be honest, like the difference wasn't big. It's negligible compared, compared to the only thing is just it's a little bit less shine. I suppose. You know? But I mean, those people they do it so subtly that you you won't even tell yeah. that they've got makeup on. Them. No, no, they that's don't. They don't. But also, it's it's also for them is how good they feel on stage. Mm. You know, you have it to, is. It's a know, comfort You have thing. to think about them about that also. It's like a, if they feel, if they feel good on stage, the music is going to be good. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And that's you know, unfortunately, I mean, not unfortunately, but it is what it is. No, you know, no, some no. some artists they like to feel good uh, physically, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, some some of the artists don't care. Some mm. of the artists, they like just, whatever they, my art is going to be, man. what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Some guys, you come my on stage does the and you tell them you you introduce yourself at the first place. 
when they arrive and you tell them what you do and how you're going to do things and you ask them few questions because you want to know if mm. and they tell you like ah man you, you do your thing you right. do your thing yeah, I, yeah. I play my music and you do the rest so you sometimes you have this mm. and then sometimes you have someone who's going to call you over and say like Three, four, this, five, six, seven this. times. Yeah, yeah, I want yeah, this. Yeah, I want yeah. that. And they're going to be this. upstairs when you're editing and everything. You've and had okay, that. You can, yeah, I've, yeah. Had, I've had that. Yeah. I've had that. We, we um, won't name any names. No, we won't uh. give any names. <laughs> uh, especially because they're coming back soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Got to keep them sweet. <laughs> but yeah, but it's it's part of it's part of the thing where you know, and they they. With time, I've learned to not mind. Mm. You know, before it's, it's not personal. Like, it's not personal. Yeah, you know? it's like it is. It is one thing that I've uh, also to sort of like hammered on. The what this does, and another time earned skill is to be able to discern whether uh, somebody's just just an asshole, or whether they're a nice person having a bad day, yeah, uh, or what, 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 yeah, and absolutely. all these things. When they say something to you, that you got this click, 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 click. Which category is this guy in? Quickly, how am I going to respond? Yeah. Uh, is because the majority of the time, ninety-five. So I'd say ninety-eight percent of the time, it's not personal. Yeah. No. No. It's absolutely. Just, yeah. They had, you know, they had a late night. They had an early lobby call and they had a flight and yeah. the bags were lost. Yeah. Or this or that yeah, or yeah, the taxi yeah, or, yeah. or there was traffic and they couldn't get. In. There's so many factors. There's so many different. Or they've been on tour for six months. They're yeah, just fucking absolutely. tired. Yeah. Yeah. Tired. You yeah, know. Absolutely. So all these things just uh, don't don't pay, take it personally. No. No. Absolutely. And take it as it comes. Yeah. And, and, Road kind of tailor your, but I mean, or sometimes it's always natural. good. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's always good to come in with a. Uh, I I always say you know the the best defense is a strong offense in this sort of situation because we get people coming in and they're like umming and awing. Uh, you know we've had late shows coming in and they're like oh what are we gonna and I'm like yeah. guys it's time yeah Let's yeah, do yeah, it. yeah make yeah, a yeah. decision absolutely um, absolutely also when uh, you know when an artist comes in from from my sort of point of, point of view. They come in and before you even know all their extenuating circumstances, you go in there like, hey, man, I'm T. This is my colleague, whoever. Uh, he's going to take care of the stage. I'll be on the sound desk today. Hopefully we set it up to, to your tech spec. And if there's anything else, let us know. We can help you out. We're going to make this a good show. And you come off as, as a confident yeah. Uh, practitioner um, and they immediately they're like ah it's one less thing we have to worry about yeah because especially if you know from our point of view when when a band goes in they they do tours you know and they play venues of varying sizes and they work with people of varying capabilities and abilities and uh, attitudes and everything especially if they don't tour their own engineer um, you know then they can sometimes get into a venue where there's a, a chef moonlighting as a, as a sound engineer yeah. or, you know, the sound engineer is late or he's got a shitty attitude yeah. or he's whatever, you know. And I think for us just to, you know, to bring the whole thing back that it's like a family, you know, we want to make people feel welcome. The, not just, I mean, for me, my, my priority is the, the artists. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Yes, we do absolutely. it for the for the for the audience because we but my client is the is the yeah, artist well yeah. i want to make them feel comfortable yeah, so that definitely. they can then go and do their job definitely i got uh the other day uh one of the artists i'd done um and he's afterwards i go because i always go and tell them good job as well if, if i think they did a good job yeah. you know i don't have to be a, a hypocrite and i don't have to be a, a kiss ass if I think if or if I didn't like the music, I'd just say, well done. Yeah. You know? But if I like the majority of the time it is, I'd yeah, go, like, good job, absolutely. well played. You know, I liked your yeah. solo there. These yeah. are, yeah. And then uh, <clears throat> like, oh, I, I'm so sorry. I forgot to mention you. I said, man, that's not a problem, right? If you forget to mention me, that's almost a bigger compliment, right? Because I did my job so well that you forgot that I was yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. If, if I'm invisible, then, you know, then... Yeah. Then I've done my job right. Yeah, I mean it's, it's, it's same same with me. Sometimes actually, uh, the the thing is like you know, I, I don't want to be visible. I don't want it to be seen. You know, so sometimes you're on the floor and you know where, where regardless of the venue you're in or the place you're filming in, you don't want to be seen. Mm. You know, you don't want to be seen by the artist. You almost want the artist to forget about you because they they they, they, they I think they perform and they behave the best when they. But Not you conscious. have to come in, like I, like I just want to come back. Yes, 
they once the show starts they don't need to know about you yeah but beforehand you need, oh, yeah, to, no, absolutely. You need to establish yeah. that connection oh, so they can then like don't have to worry about the lights or the video definitely chris john's taking care definitely. of definitely yeah i don't have to worry about the sound yeah. we've got a good sound check we've got a competent guy behind the desk you know i'm not talking about me no, no, absolutely. I'm, you know but everybody that works yeah. and ronnie's are capable of doing yeah. their job and you know so that's another factor yeah like um i explained this before say a show let's say it's a 75 minute show right and you convert each of those minutes into a point right that they're of their focus right and if you take away 20 minutes or 20 points from their focus on the gig they've only got 55 points left yeah you know or if we go into percentage thing you know they've only got like 83 percent left yeah of of their ability to concentrate on the gig and if it's if there's a feedback, then there's another five yeah, points yeah, away. Yeah, and if yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. you know, then yeah. they like, oh, and then they yeah. can't do their job. And, oh, this fucking light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah, fucking yeah, camera yeah, guy. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, you know, definitely. It, it, it just takes away from the show and their ability to do their job because that's what they do. That's, yeah, that's their absolutely, job. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, you know, if we can be as invisible as we can. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's why, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> but we should probably disappear right now because uh, – you have a meeting in two hours. Yeah. Um, and yeah. It's already it's, too. Uh, that goes, it's already goes, too. It's, goes fast. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, I, it I've does. had a I've had a fantastic time, man. Oh I hope, man, it was I hope amazing. we can do this it again. Was, yeah, definitely, absolutely. Um, um, it uh, we'll 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 arrange a time. I've got some spots in June. Cool. Uh, perfect. In the summertime. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll do a bit absolutely. of that. Absolutely, I'm 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 more than happy to do it again. It was amazing. Thank, thank you, man. Thank you for having me. Uh, absolutely. All right. See you again. See you well, again. I'm gonna see you all day. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we'll see you soon. Right, cool. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Right. Well, there we have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I have. Um, I hope you've taken some of that with you um, for the journey ahead. Um, I will be sharing Christians social media in the description as will i do mine um you can get in contact with me or christian and see what we're up to i have a patreon page as well if you want to support me there it's patreon.com forward slash hey sound guy and you can support the cause there as always like share subscribe get the word out there thank you till next time